a couple of years ago, trial study uh, without the benefit of this LIDAR data up the north coast of the National Park. Um, so again, this is a risk curve. I flipped it around for some reason. I uh, can't go into now. Uh, but it turns out that uh, using these models, we can actually work out the amount of recession, the negative recession being uh, the coast actually builds out with some possibility that it build out. And so we can get numbers that we can then map as a sort of risk gradient, sort of risk contours back onto the landscape. This is something that the state government, uh, because it has people called constituents who they're terrified of, um, don't want to do. They don't want to see maps like this. Uh, so uh, they would, uh, for instance, advocate uh, that, well, if you're going to do this, just just colour it in a, in a rainbow gradation of colours with the red bit closer to the beach and the green bits mean it's okay furthest from the beach. But these guys haven't stood up in the court of law being cross-examined as an expert witness and after they've got <coughs> over asking, you, asking Dr. Carl why he failed chemistry one and all this evidence here today is useless, the next question is, well, how did you arrive at these colours? <coughs> what were the numbers? So it always comes back to numbers. And so council staff considering um, consent uh, processes know exactly what the problem of numbers, the tyranny of numbers, boils down to. There's no way around it. We have to have them. Um, one of the one of the just the sides I want to point out here. This is some uh, seismic survey done offshore. A lot of people say, well, how do we know what the coast is going to do in future? Uh, sea level hasn't risen substantially yet. Well, it has, you know, over geological time, and it has left behind. You know, records that we can get seismic surveys of. These, these strikes through here are actually previous uh, beach locations, and we can use that to be able to evaluate and calibrate our model uh, or our models for the response to these things in the future. We can apply, I'm not going to go to this in any detail, but we can apply exactly the same sort of principles of stochastic simulation or probabilistic forecasts to simple models. In estuaries, this is uh, Tugra Lake. We've worked on that just using, again, John Hunt, the LIDAR data that John Hudson uh, collected um, on behalf of the state, paid for by the state. So we've got very accurate low elevation terrain information that we can feed into our model along with the full gamut of sea level scenarios, if you like, sedimentation rates that uh, are occurring. The geological processes still keep going while climate change is happening, right? Things like sedimentation still keeps occurring. So we, we just can't ignore these things. We have to factor them in as well. We can produce, uh, well, in this case, it's a, a risk curve for percentage loss of mangrove area, but it could be through loss of infrastructure and so on as well. This brings us to sort of the polemics, I suppose. How much do we need to know before we can start saying everything? Do we need to know everything? And there are some people say, well, we won't say anything until we know everything, uh, because it's dangerous to do so. But councils know, you can't wait, because today there's somebody down there in the council office determining, providing advice on the consent based on, uh, based on numbers. So we, we can't, but also we don't have to wait for every, until we know everything before we get on with the job. But we do have to manage the uncertainty. So we need risk-based forecasts where we have probability estimates of being wrong. Can we ever know everything? So this is the other side of do we wait around until we know everything? Well, the, the reality is we well know that there are intrinsic limits of knowledge because of things like chaos theory and a whole bunch of other uh, scientifically based things. We have these most amazing models for the hydrodynamics and sediment transport these days that do just about everything. They're so big, however, they generally run slower than real time. So if you want to know what it's going to be like in 2100, <laughs> you have to wait till 2200 for the models to stop operating. Like the white mice out of Douglas Adams. By then you've forgotten why you're doing it, of course. <laughs> the reality is the people who built these models tell everybody who's willing to listen, you can't apply these models for the long-term problem. You just can't do it. So we, these sorts of exercises are complete nonsense. Okay, that doesn't mean much to many of you, I guess, but this is sort of me uh, holding forth simply because this is what's happening. In fact, the Federal Department is advocating use of these models so that, uh, and putting out tenders for people to apply these models so that uh, they think they will then know more about the future. 
To manage the uncertainty, well, as I've already mentioned, we, we certainly need a, a uh, coastal process model to 